Just kind of quickly show how I accessed first the color maps on the skeleton and then I'll add the muscles to show that motion again. So to add the color map on top of the skeletal system, you select the skeletal icon in the bottom left of the screen and then select the plus icon. And this is going to first turn on the different parts and then the surfaces of bones. So you would be able to individually select any of these different parts of the bone or you would be able to select an individual bone, hide everything else, and look at that in isolation. So now you'd better be able to teach your students about points of articulation where it meets up with the other bones. You would also be able to discuss sites of muscular attachment by selecting some of the other features. Now if we bring back the rest of the skeletal system, and I wanted to look at the next color map, I would hit the plus icon again, and now I can see some additional surfaces depicted on the bones as well. Additionally, I could continue and select the third layer, which is now going to add sites of muscle attachment. And there are different ways that you can utilize the muscular attachment sites. For example, I could select any single surface and see what muscle would attach there. So if we're looking at movements here at the base of the skull, and I wanted to see where certain muscles may attach, I can actually directly turn on a motion, which is going to turn on the muscles involved in an action involving that side of muscle attachment. I could further emphasize that individual muscle by fading the other muscles in the area. So now you can see rotation occurring in the cervical vertebrae in the neck, and see when that muscle is activated when it turns when it gets highlighted or you can select the other muscles in the area to see what else would assist in rotating the head. Now another way that you could access that same information is if I turn off the color maps on the skeletal system again by using the minus icon I can actually turn on the muscular system layer by layer so now if I were to just put on the first layer, we can see here the muscles in the suboccipital triangle. And if you wanted to emphasize this, there's a few ways you could do it. You could draw with a 3D pen tool, which is essentially going to tattoo the model and create a drawing that is going to move with the model as you rotate it. Furthermore, what you could do would be add labels. So I could draw attention to some of these muscles one at a time and add a label. Now let's say I wanted to move the model and make this a little bit more dynamic when I select the labels. And all of this is new functionality that is going to be in Complete Anatomy but not in our previous apps like Essential Anatomy 5. And then let's say I wanted to add one more here at the bottom. Now the way that these labels work is I could do a default label by single selecting on any structure or I could do a custom label by double selecting on the model set anywhere. So I could add my own label and the difference here is that if I select one of the default labels there's more information that's going to be provided as they select that label. Whereas the customized label it's only going to give the information that I have provided. But you can see that the model set is going to be able to move as I select each of these labels to make this more interactive and engaging once you share this. So the way that the, the platform is designed is you can create a customized view of what you want to show. And let's say I wanted to show how these muscles are related to an overlying muscle, the trapezius. And I turn on the trapezius and I want to create a small window perhaps to help emphasize where these muscles are going to be located. So I can actually remove a piece of the trapezius to create a window as well. And this is a new functionality in Complete Anatomy additionally. So let's say I really like this because it has teaching value for the students and maybe there's a clinical correlate that you want to draw of including uh, an artery that runs through this space. So if I have found the vertebral artery and I turn that on on the left side, we can see that that's ascending up in through this little window. So now I could put another label here to point that out. 
Now, the way that the platform works is there's the model side, which is what we've been looking at now, where you can turn things on, animate it, move it, you can rotate, fade things. There's a lot of functionality with the Atlas. But now what's really different about this platform is the sharing functionality. So every user has a profile. So your instructors could create a profile each individually. Now, the way that we manage content is through groups. So you could create a new group and call this Sherman College um, Anatomy Year One, right? So you can be as specific as you want with the name. Then I create the group and I would be able to add specific members. So these members could be the other instructors if you want to collaborate or an entire group of students. Now, once you've created this resource and you like it, you would be able to save this as an interactive screen. So I would pick the region of the body. In this case, this is the neck. I would be able to select which group do I want to share the content with. And my, mine is quite large. Yours is going to have just a few groups initially or the default groups. And then you would give this a name. So in this case, suboccipital triangle. Now, as I save that asset, anybody within the group is instantly going to be notified that I've now created a new resource for them to look at. So we could create multiple screens that are each going to highlight specific pieces of anatomy for a reason. For example, if you wanted to highlight just the atlanto-occipital joint and what type of movement this is going to allow, you could create default labels to point out the bones and talk about the zygopophyseal joint. You could talk about a joint capsule. Maybe you don't want this quite as faded as what I've illustrated. So you want to bring back in that. And you also want to have all of maybe the connective tissue start to be shown around it. Or even some of the ligaments in the area that would restrict movement like was requested. So there's a lot of customization of what you can create and then you could take this and save that screen as a new version. So I could call this one a different name and again save it to this group. Now the way that it's designed is that any user that is going to be added into that group is going to be able to see the created content. So the first step is creating a screen. And the screens, if we go to, let's see if I can select this one. Oh, wrong one, sorry. So again, any user that's in that, let's see if I can get it this, there we go. So now I've created two screens within Sherman College Anatomy Year One. There's one on the suboccipital triangle, and there's another one that's going to be on the atlanto-occipital joint. So here, the user would be able to interact with any of those labels that have been created, self-explore, study, and review the material either before class or as an in-class activity. Now you can take it one step further and actually create what we call a recording. And a recording is your opportunity to actually teach exactly what you want the students to know about that topic. Here, I could make a recording where I'm instructing the students on the three muscles that make up the borders of this suboccipital triangle, beginning with the obliquus capitis inferior, otherwise known as the inferior oblique, the superior oblique or obliquus capitis superior, and then lastly, the rectus capitis posterior major. You may want to emphasize that there's also a minor, but that's not part of the triangle. And then the content here, the vertebral artery. So you could discuss whatever you want to about that topic. You could include motions while you're teaching so that students could be reinforced about the relevant motions, actions of these muscles, what to watch out for, any clinical correlates that you need to emphasize could be covered at the same time. Now I could also use a highlight pen tool which is going to simply be a recording functionality to emphasize again key anatomy. I save this Again, I could save that to a specific group. And after this, I'll get your emails and I can add you and the other instructors to this group. And what you're going to see is that um, 
you'll be able to actually view all of these resources that I'm making, the two screens as well as this recording on your own devices. Now you'll get a notification that new content has been added so you'll need to accept an invitation once you get it added into the group which you would do under your profile you'll see a notifications tab which would inform you that new content's been added. Once you sync that content you'll be able to access it just the same as me within your um, group access. So now the recordings are really cool because it takes it beyond just capturing uh, an mp4 or a movie file. What this is, is it's recorded all of my interactivity with the model set. So if I play this back, you're going to be able to see exactly what I did while I was manipulating the model and you would hear the audio. Now at any time as a user, I can pause this interaction I can change my perspective. I didn't do this during the actual recording. I'm now controlling my perspective on the screen and I can control looking at any of the labels that have been provided while I'm in recording playback. So the student is still engaged and still part of that process even while watching a recording. Then when they're ready, they hit play and it will pick up wherever the demo left off. So it's really an engaging way to share content, supplement a course, create customized material through screens or recordings. And now where it really kind of comes all together is that as an instructor, you've taken the time to show this for a reason, but I want to package it for maybe a day or a week of a course content. And what you can do is create different types of scenarios. One example would be, let's say you have a lab activity where you want the students to explore the bones of the lower limb on their own. Now you could do this as a series of screens where students would be able to navigate through the content that's been provided in a sequence and walk step by step through everything that has been presented to them within the lecture. The lectures don't need to just consist of screens you could also create a lecture that would have recordings or quizzes within it. So I'll show you an example of blood flow through the heart where I would be able to teach students about the chambers of the heart. They can hear me teaching them about this, see me drawing on the screen, hear my voice, all the explanations that are pertinent for that course. Now the user is going to be able to self-navigate through that list of assets that have been provided. And at the end, let's say you want to test their knowledge. You could include a quiz that would either give immediate feedback when they answer the question or wait until the very end. So maybe they didn't know an answer or maybe they did and they're exploring. So you can have multiple choice questions. You could also have um, a label that is on the screen. And even during the quiz mode, I can spin the model and look around and then select the label again to see what is that thing that has been illustrated. So the students, you could create a mastery quiz that is going to test their knowledge of what they just walked through. Now all of this is basically going to be again delivered within a private group that only your participants would see. So the instructors could have a private group where they storyboard and make content the uh, students could be in a separate group that you now share content with. Um, I'd mentioned the undergraduate curriculum before and if we were just looking at the neck, you can see that I've already got a lot of resources identifying screens and structures within the neck that's really quite robust. So this could be an excellent starting point for your instructors where they could manage content based on what they're seeing here but maybe there's certain modifications that they want to make to highlight points of emphasis in particular for a chiropractic school.